What is good YouTube? Hope everyone is doing well. Over these last couple of months during my free time, I've gotten a chance to check out and read the first three parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. JoJo's is a series that I've always wanted to check out. I've either just didn't have the time or was reading something else, but it's always been on my to-do list. I'm currently on part four, but seeing as the first three parts are a battle between the Stars and Dio, I figured I should just make one big old review for the first three parts. With that being said, I look forward to making more JoJo's content as I continue to read through the parts. I'm currently on part four and it's so good. But yeah guys, we are about to jump straight into the review, but before we do, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Here on this channel, we cover all sorts of dope anime and manga related content. So if you like Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, One Piece, Jojo's, and more, definitely all are that subscribe button. <laughs> jump a like if you end up enjoying the video and comment down below things I may have missed or things you liked about certain parts of the story. And what's your overall opinion on the first three parts of Jojo? Now enough talking, let us begin. So Phantom Blood, Um, I think the plot for part one is pretty straightforward. We have two boys, one who is pure hearted and the other who is evil. Both of these guys come from different upbringings, yet fate has somehow aligned for these two to meet. Jonathan as a protagonist is as shown as it gets, but given the setting and time that Phantom Blood takes place in, Jonathan does a great job of representing the pure hearted gentleman and it's done so well to the degree some of his acts actually moved me. Such as him not hurting Speedwagon because he know he has a family or people who care about him and wouldn't want to see him hurt. And the fact that this is Jonathan coming from seeing his sick father makes it even make more sense and hits even harder. I love how one of Jonathan's defining personality traits is that as hard as you hit him he bounces back and comes back even stronger. And I feel like that's been something that's passed down with the Joe Stars throughout the series. You know all these guys have personalities of Jonathan throughout them. As you know, Jonathan is the, the first ever Jojo. But yeah, antagonists. So moving on, part one antagonists are really great, especially Dio and Brew Ford. Brew Ford really moved me. I love his story personality. And his fight with Jonathan was amazing. And the conclusion to his inner conflict he had going on was really good. Dio, well, for many people, Dio was the highlight of part one. As we follow him a lot, we go really deep into how evil this man could be. Such as when he burned Danny, that was horrifying. Or when he fed the lady her own baby. But besides those two, Jack the Ripper was okay. I like how Jonathan used the wine to figure out where he was and defeated him. I feel like coming up with a power system for a story can be very difficult. But Araki's idea of hammer was pretty good. And I'm just not talking about fighting style. I'm talking about like how it's used in tense situations. For example, when Tarkus was about to slice out their heads, Jonathan and Antonio Zapelli used the leaves and hammer, of course, to create this magnetic glider that allowed them to escape. That was really cool. That was actually one of my favorite moments in the series. I'm talking about for part one. We also have other cool moments such as the fight against Blue Ford where Jonathan uses the Hammond underwater to fire back an even harder shot that actually manages to graze Blue Ford on the forehead. Then we have the moment where Jonathan lit his hand on fire to punch Dio that was awesome. But yeah, um, um, conclusion. So the ending of part one was something I honestly didn't expect. I think it was a bold move from Araki to kill off Jonathan at the end and leave Dio with the final victory. The final panel with them talking about how no one will ever know the courageous fight Jonathan fought. And we see all the faces of everyone that died and everyone that was involved that really hit hard. When it comes to part 1, I say the best thing about it is Dio. For many people, Dio is seen as this character we focus much on. You know, we get his backstory, his reactions and feelings towards Jonathan and the events that transpire around him. Many people have a hard time getting into Jojo because of Phantom Blood. I personally think it's good, however, I can see why many people don't like it. If I had to rate Phantom Blood out of 10, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, it is the beginning of something that we go on to really love. So uh, yeah, it was a great foundation for the series as a whole. But yeah, let's get into Battle Tendencies. So I'm just going to come out and say by far Battle Tendencies is my favorite part out of the first three. And that's mainly because of Joseph and the Pillar Man. Joseph is my favorite Jojo and it's not even close. I absolutely love his personality, how clever he is, how he earns the respect of all the opponents he fights against, and how he fights to the very end. It's just part two was very fun experience and length as a whole is perfect. It doesn't overstay its welcome by sending out a solid 69 chapters. Araki doesn't bother wasting time either by having our heroes fight directly against the Pillar Man. Not any unnecessary henchmen. I love the cast from part two. Lisa Lisa was a great mentor. She was pretty chill and laid back. Caesar was awesome, one of the best Joe Bros, and his exit from the story was beautiful. To not only fight the way he did, but to go out even earning the respect of Wamu was amazing. Of course, Joseph's reaction to his death hit me really hard. This made the fight against Wamu hit even harder, and I have to add, I love the chariot battle concept between Wamu and Joseph. Wamu had to have been my favorite antagonist of part 2, and that's mainly because of his stoic personality. Both Joseph and Caesar had respect for Wamu at the end of their fights, and the same could be said towards Wamu. You know, Wamu respected both Caesar and Joseph. He even let Caesar give his remaining ham on to Joseph, which actually helped Joseph defeat Wamu. So there goes that. Uh, cars and ECDs were okay. I really didn't like how, you know, petty they got after they lost, type of bullshit that they pull off. <laughs> but, you know, they were okay, you know. They were okay. Cars was. He was he was cool. I like how Joseph defeated Cars towards the end. 
In all honesty, if I was probably reading weekly, I'd be really shocked that Rocky goes off to kill off Joseph at the end. But because I saw glimpses of part three and I saw Joseph as an old man there, it didn't really, you know, phase me like that. I was just curious as to see like how Rocky goes about this. And you know, the ending for part two was really wholesome. You know, Joseph gets married at the end. Uh, he finds out Lisa Lisa is his mom. And then we set things up for uh, Jotaro. And part three, so I honestly have a lot to say for this one. Um, where do I begin? So let's begin with stands. So stands are probably my favorite thing about part three. They're so fun and creative and really make the fight against the village interesting as each stand has its own niche that makes it special. With that in mind, the battles aren't that straightforward and the characters actually have to come up with ways to get over their opponents. And uh, majority of the fights require thinking, luck, level, intelligence and how fast can you respond once your plan falls apart almost all fights are unique in a way and play out different from one another they the fights do have similar endings as they usually end with one of the guys uh beating the opponents one-on-one -on -one, someone else coming to help or the opponent trapping themselves but they're very entertaining which is what matters most i heard at the, at the time of part two serialization dragon ball was like the biggest thing and everyone was being advised to follow like a tournament format however rocky decided to do otherwise which is something i really respect even though the monster of the week episodic format can get repetitive, it was something really enjoyable and something different, you know. Um, moving on to the cast. So part three's cast is really fun. The personality of the guys blends so well together. Paul Nerf is most likely my favorite character in part three, but I really enjoyed them all. You guys know Joseph is my favorite character in all Jojo parts, but if I had to say Paul Nerf is the character I enjoy most in Stardust Crusaders, I really love the moment following uh, Elise's defeat. The girl uh, Paul Nerf wanted to get with recognizes the Paul Nerf, and despite, you know, her wanting him and Paul Nerf wanting to be with her as well. He understands that he has a much more important task to complete and that comes before anything else which is why he pretends to act like he doesn't know her. And this even moved Jotaro and nothing moves Jotaro. <laughs> this was such a huge moment as a character for Paul Nerf and it's one of my favorite moments in Stardust Crusader. Moving on to Kakuin. Kakuin is probably my least favorite character out of the guys. I mean maybe because Araki doesn't spend as much time on him like the others but even so I still prefer even if he got more panel time uh towards the end of uh stardust crusaders we got this moment where why he liked them so much it was because like he shared so much with them in common and that was like a first time in his life that he's ever felt that way which was really wholesome you know but i just wish you know uh we explored that earlier in part three i mean i understand why you know to give him that emotional send-off but abodo didn't need that send-off in his depth his you know that was the death that hit the hardest for me in part three but you know it is what it is Moving on to Jotaro, so I feel like Jotaro's badass moments are some of the most exciting parts of Stardust Crusaders to get you really hyped. I love Jotaro as a character, he is so reserved and stoic. And besides his badass moments, one of the things I like most about Jotaro is his showing of intellect and cleverness. And more importantly, his ability to come up with great solutions while under pressure, which is what makes him so great. This is something we see all throughout Stardust Crusaders, these impossible scenarios, yet he finds a loophole and comes out victorious. It's very admirable, you know. But moving on to setting, I love the change of setting throughout part 3. It's pretty fun to see them tour the world and get to experience all these different cultures, even if it's just a little bit. I absolutely love the section with Joseph getting hyped over Donor and Kebab. I'm a huge fan of Mediterranean food and I'm pretty sure that should be hidden different. I want to try it though. I want to try I try Euros and... uh chicken shawamas and all that but i haven't tried donut kebab i gotta try that moving on <laughs> one of my complaints when it comes to stardust crusaders is the length i think stardust crusaders could have been much shorter i don't think it needed to be 152 chapters as the method starts to get repetitive you know they enter a city or country there's an assassin sent by deal hiding somewhere and they get to take him down however because the fights were so entertaining i didn't have as much of a problem with it i say out of all the fights uh jotaro versus darby is my favorite fight in part three it was hilarious i love how jotaro bluffed his way into winning that is a prime example of when you start to doubt yourself is when you really lose um, it was a really fun experience to read and the ending was absolutely hilarious to see Jotaro's shitty hand like <laughs> But that no, I mean Jotaro did admit that like he knew if he looked at his hand like <laughs> the fight would have been over But yeah moving on uh, speaking of a of Darby another fight Which I really enjoyed was the battle against the younger Darby brother It was something I've never experienced before a racing game which are so on the line if you lose you get to turn into a doll it was a great spin on the first Darby fight and one could even make the argument it was better. You know, it all depends on you. I was really upset that Kalkween lost them. It was his first fight in such a long time. He seemed like he had it in the bag until when he found out. He played right into the younger Darby brother's hand. Uh, but yeah, the final home stretch was really good. We got some characters' deaths that really hit, especially Avados. Iggy's death was sad, but I honestly wish Araki spent more time to build Iggy and Polyner's bond. So when Iggy did, you know, take that exit from the story, it would have hit much harder. Avados' death hit so hard for me because we know how close he was with Polyner. 
And the fact he went back on his word when it came to every man himself, you know, prior to them entering Dio's mansion, it was just beautiful. I love how Palner figured out Cool Ice was a vampire after realizing he was stabbed with Cherry in the head, yet he was still alive. That was great. And the panel with Palner seeing Avido and Iggy's spirit was just beautiful. Like, that shit really hit hard. Now, the grand finale, the fight against Dio. Before I even talk about the fight, I just want to get one thing out of the way. Dio does a great job establishing himself as a villain while he's on screen. He was shown very briefly throughout part 3, and I just wish we got more of him in part 3. Like his goals and dreams after taking on a Joe Star, his reaction to his foreigners being defeated, and more of his philosophy on humankind. He talks about some interesting things, such as his philosophy as to why humans need to feel secure the things that are available to everyone losing value. The stand battles throughout part 3 were really fun, but I wish we could cut them down just to focus a bit more on Dio. Throughout part 3, there are times when Araki plays with the idea of making Dio a complex villain, such as when we get moments where the antagonists meet defeat and refuse to give up their loyalty to Dio. Most of the time it was straight up fear, but there were other times where the characters claimed that Dio gave them a sense of purpose, such as the blind dude. And I even had Jotaro asking himself like, what kind of man is Dio? I feel like part one established Dio so well, Araki probably felt like he didn't have to include Dio like that in part three until it was time to face up against him. Even so, I'm sure Dio grew as a character, but maybe not in the way that he redeems himself or gets a change of heart, but maybe in the way that you know, now he isn't part of the human race. And this time that he lives in is way beyond his time. He's almost like an outsider. If you think about it, you know, observing everyone else from the shadows. Uh, maybe I'm rambling, but that's just like how I see it. But yeah, the battle against Dio was very entertaining with the whole stopping time. Dio being full of himself. His personality is something I don't think I'll just ever get tired of. You know, it was nice to see Jotaro once again figuring out a way to overcome an impossible obstacle. The defeat against Dio was satisfying. Jotaro's line to send off. Dio was pretty cold. You lost because you pissed me off. The final chapter had a few moments that stuck out to me really well and one that I'll always remember. I enjoyed the moment where Holly woke up feeling better as that was the entire point of even going on in this journey. To see her was that was nice. Uh, the goodbye between Paul and Earth was kind of sad. You know, we spent so much time with these guys and now it's like, you gotta say goodbye. But it also felt weird not seeing their entire game make it out alive. It felt so sad to see like only three of them. It was at that moment I wished like they all made it back. But that just goes to remind you that it took a lot of sacrifice to defeat Dio. Moving on, the moment where they reflect on Iggy, Alvaro, and Kakumi's death was pretty sad as well. But the moment that hit the hardest for me was the final chapter where Jotaro was trying to bring Joseph back. And the doctors told him it was impossible. Jotaro then said to the doctor, he didn't want to hear that. This journey has been full of impossible things. I'm sick of hearing those words like hopeless and impossible. They mean nothing to us. I feel like that quote summarized the entire part three in the theme of jojo araki stated in an interview that the theme of jojo was to live a life with a positive mindset and it resonates heavily with the story as time and time again these characters are found in tough situations and rather than spending too much time dwelling on how much they screwed up or how down bad they are they're looking to think about what they could do next to make the situation play in their favor and that can be said for both good and bad guys which is really powerful when it comes to part three my biggest complaint again is the length stands and fights were really fun for what they were but i don't think part three needed to be 152 chapters of stand fights as entertaining as they were it gets to a point where it'll feel repetitive which is why it took me so long to finish it i say my favorite thing when it comes to part three are the stands and the cast i really enjoy the main four it was such an experience with those guys and their personalities blending so well. If I had to rate Stardust Crusaders, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I did like battle tendencies more, but the fights in this were really fun, and the stands became the start of something really beautiful. Before I end the video, there's one thing I like to talk about, and that can be honestly said for all parts of JoJo, and it's the art. The art is something, like, it's completely something else. I don't know how Araki does it, but the art is so beautiful, and it's very unique. And it fits perfectly with what this series is about, you know. That bizarre nature. Anyways, I really enjoyed the first three parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I look forward to the rest and putting out these review videos. Uh, drop a like if you end up enjoying the video and definitely feel free to comment down below what you felt about each part and what's your favorite. Subscribe for more awesome videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Have an awesome day.